Hi there, I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to another Silverbird Selection game review and this time we're going to look at a Silver Range title called Pneumatic Hammers. And this was released in the Silver Range packaging in 1987. Fairly uncommon game, don't see many copies of it on eBay and it tends to fetch a few quid at least, anything up to £5 I've seen it for on eBay at the moment. My copy cost me £2.50 so I'm happy about that. Let's take a look at the game, starting with the packaging as always and then we'll see how the game plays. Here's the front cover then, it's fairly typical Silver Range packaging with the frame going round and the image in the background. That image seems to be what looks like a giant cylinder, presumably that is a pneumatic hammer. And we've got the pneumatic hammer's logo. And also this gentleman about to be squashed by the pneumatic hammer, who bears a little bit of a resemblance to a certain character created by Steven Spielberg and George Lucas in the 80s. And in his hand is a bag of what is presumably gold spilling out, and the significance of that will be explained in due course. And the spine, you can see the image wrapping around and the pneumatic hammer's logo on it. And then there's another pneumatic hammer on the back. A couple of screenshots. Looks like a factory on that one and just like a load of dirt on that one there. And then the description of the game is a bit hard to read because they've decided to put black text over the image which has got several black bars on it. But it says, it's a race against time to get the gold, cast something and save the research base. So yeah, a bit vague on what the uh, idea of the game is from the back cover, but I'm sure it'll all become clear very soon. Inside the inlay, it's all very familiar. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at this. It's the list of Firebird games available for different systems. The mail order e information. And then we get the instructions. As you can see, Pneumatic Hammers is copyright 1987 Andromeda Software. And the description of the game, Red Alert. The Lee Valley Gold Research Base is under threat of destruction. The electrical power lever has broken off and there's no other way of switching off the plant's pneumatic hammers. It goes on to say hammers are installed to hammer bridge pillars into the riverbed. Continuous operation of these hammers is causing the rock face to crack and crumble into the valley floor. Red O'Blair, famous troubleshooter, is choppered in to save the day. Funny enough, he didn't really look like Red O'Blair on the front cover, he looked more like um, a certain Dr. Jones. Anyway, never mind. Let's move on to how you play the game, and there's lots of instructions there which I'm not going to go into the details of, but basically they tell you the various steps you have to take within the game uh, to solve the problem. You've Effectively, the key points are you've got to get some gold, smelt it and make it into a lever, which then helps you turn off the pneumatic hammers. There's a lot more to it than that, which we'll see in due course, but that was the basics. So you can see the game is loaded and we've got a title screen of sorts. Fiber presents pneumatic hammers, copyright Andromeda software. This screen you only see once when the game first loads. And as you can see, we've got the helicopter flying in to this research facility, which is at the bottom of the screen there in the middle of this valley. And the helicopter's flying in to save it from the malfunctioning pneumatic hammers. So the drawing's quite nice. Lots of reds and browns and blues and that theme of colours with the blues and the pinks and the reds does continue throughout the game. As you can see we're now on the sort of title screens, if you can call it that, with the three options rotating through there, lighting up as to whether to play a practice version, uh, play blind with no information or with information displayed. You can probably guess which of the three options I'm going to go for. I have tried the practice version, I couldn't work out how it really differs from the normal game, so we'll be going with information displayed because I definitely don't want to play blind. Now what you'll see once I start this is some options for gameplay difficulty settings. Uh, and this strange sort of cycling through options continues. It's a really bizarre way of choosing your options. I don't really know what's wrong with just 
moving left or right to choose your option and then pressing fire but no instead it cycles through the three options so the first one is frequency of hammer strokes which I'm going to set as low as I assume that's the easiest option uh, and you have to wait for it to cycle around to the right option and then press fire on it and if you get it wrong then it's tough you basically just have to restart the game if you don't want the options that are chosen if you're chosen by accident so then again you've got the weight of the switch lever now the lever is a thing you've got to create to fix the whole situation with these hammers so I'm assuming again the lowest number is probably going to make it easiest for me and finally the average time between crumbles I assume is the rock falls that come down either side we'll get to that in a minute so I'm going to say long for that okay so the game now starts and the first thing you'll see is the bottom half of the screen is kind of a, an overview map of the whole area that you're working in so in the middle you've got the research facility uh, you can see a little glowing square at the top by the helicopter that's where I am at the moment uh, and then below that you've got various floors with various items in various different things to do which we'll get to in a minute you can also see the six hammers three each on the left and right of the research facility and then on the right and left hand side you've got these uh, slopes of mountain or valley um, where you've got to go and get the gold to make the hammer and the numbers on the bottom left and right are the number of gold pieces currently available in those two areas so that's a sort of overview map as you can see on the top you've got me that's me wandering backwards and forwards of my own accord I'm not moving the joystick at all he's just kind of plodding backwards and forwards as soon as I move the joystick I will take control of him so I'm this little guy doesn't look anything like the guy on the front cover uh, he looks more like basically a bloke in a mining helmet um, so you can go near the helicopter and even get into it but you can't fly off because I think you can't the idea is you can't do that till you've fixed the problem um, so actually what you do is you go into the research facility by going into this little lift here or I should say ladder so you go down the ladder into the first floor you can see now that the little glowing square is now on the first floor down from the, the uh, roof of the facility uh, and again my guy just starts wandering around aimlessly so on each floor there's something to do and this first floor is where you uh, put the lever when you've made it I think so it's a combination of wandering around as this little chap and then using as you've just seen when you go in here a kind of hand based pointer to do various things so what you can also see is some lifts going up and down so I'll climb in one of those lifts that will take me down to the lower levels I'll skip that one for now and that one I've only found this out by trial and error but this is the floor where oh I've missed it so okay I'm gonna be out at the bottom now then go back up a level so this is the floor where I get the metal detector which I need to detect the gold so to just give you the overview of the game again I need a metal detector I have to go to these different piles of um, rubble either side of the screen at the bottom there and you can just hear a rock fall coming now actually might have just noticed that on the left hand side now the number of gold pieces actually changed on that side to four so I've got to get a metal detector detect some gold then take it back into this research facility to smelt into a lever and the lever will then be used to turn off the pneumatic hammers complicated I believe so so this is the first thing I've got to grab myself a metal detector and it's quite hard to do it's very fiddly the controls are very fiddly there we go I finally got it so you grab yourself a metal detector take that off the screen you'll now see that on the left hand side there in the middle it shows that I've got a metal detector so now I need to go down to the ground floor and although you can't see it there's a door in the front of the screen there you go I'm going out the door so the arrow below me there seems to be suggesting that I should go to the right hand side at the moment so I'll do that so to get to the rockfall area or the valley whatever you want to call it I've got to jump across past the pneumatic hammers and I do that by just pushing right and pressing fire but obviously if you get hit by the hammer you get knocked into the water and you have to go back to the start oh 
or even if you get close to it. So this is very infuriating. What I said about the fiddly controls, now what's going on here? Now it's done that side on a rock fall that side. So that probably means there isn't going to be another rock fall that side for a while. So I'm going to stick with that side for now. So jump across the first platform, I've jumped straight over it and back into the water. This is absolutely bloody infuriating this bit of the game. And it also serves next to no purpose in the long run. Oh, now I've jumped too short. It serves next to no purpose in the long run because all you're doing is jumping across these pilings to get to the, oh, what the hell? There's like a specific place you need to stand to get onto the platform. There we go. Jump onto the second one. Just hang on a second. Jump onto the third one. Oh, fell off. Oh my God, it sends you all the way back. Let's try again. Oh, it's so infuriating. Because you look like you're still standing on the edge, but actually it throws you off the edge. Right, finally made it across. These piles, by the way, are extra bits of wood that you can put on top of the, um, the things that the hammers are hitting so that it's delaying the fact that the hammer's going to get down to the, the riverbed and uh, to the rock and cause chaos or whatever it's going to do. But I cannot work out how you put them onto the, the piles of wood that are already there. So if I jump back over here, Oh, maybe you do it like that. Nope, that just fell off. Now, now I've lost the wood completely, it's gone. So yeah, that's a bit of a mystery to me, but I'm not concerning myself with that too much. Let's head over here and try and find some gold. Oh, so it switches to this overhead view of the ground, and if you move your metal detector around, eventually it'll beep and you'll find some gold. I'm assuming that's the closest point. So then press fire to put the metal detector down and then you move the hand to roughly where you think the gold is to try and uncover it. And again, it's very fiddly, very precise and you just kind of move the hand around pressing fire a lot, hoping for the best that you'll find the gold. I still can't find it. No idea where it is. Okay, let's pick the metal detector up again. Oh, great. So I was assuming that rock fall was going to come on the left hand side, but it's come on the right and I've now lost my metal detector and all the gold is now being covered up as well. So I think I've just worked out what that arrow's for. That arrow's telling you when the next rock fall is going to come from. So I've learned something there, but now I've got to go all the way back to the research facility to get another metal detector which means jumping across these things and going all the way back. So I've been back to get my metal detector. I'm now on the left hand side of the screen and I'm going to try and find some gold again. Oh, well, it suggests that's going to have some gold there. So I'll... there we go. So I found some gold, although it appears to actually be blue. So I'll try and pick that up, which again is very fiddly. So you've got to pick the gold up and then put it in the sack at the bottom right of the middle bit of the screen. But I'm still trying to pick it up here and I can't grip onto it. It's absolutely ridiculous. There we go, I finally got it. So now I've just got to put it in the bag. Hopefully that won't take too much effort. But it does. So I've pressed fire about 15 times now. There's, there's obviously a specific pixel perfect point where you can put this gold into the sack. But can I find it? Can I help? When I've played this before, to try and understand how it all works, I was thinking the fire button must be broken on the joystick, but it isn't. It's just such a ridiculous point that you've got to put it into and I just can't find it. This is absolutely ludicrous. Finally, I've managed to put the gold into the sack. So now I'll get my metal detector, try and find another piece of gold.
Definitely seems to be around that spot. Let's see if we can find that. And again, it's hammer the fire button, try and find the specific spot that, that gold's hidden. No indication of exactly where it is other than using the metal detector. This game is absolutely ludicrous. Okay, so there's just been a rock fall on the right hand side and I can now see the arrows pointing to the left so I've got to be fairly careful about getting these pieces of gold now otherwise I'm going to have a rock fall and lose everything. But I cannot find that one. I'll pick up the metal detector again. It definitely seems to be around that area. Okay, I give up. I'm going to take the piece I've got and then go over to the other side. If I could only pick up the goddamn metal detector. Cut my losses and head over to the opposite side and get the... Try and get the gold from that side instead. Oh no. That's me knocked in the water and all the way back. So I'm heading over to the right hand side now, let's see if we can find any gold on this side. It's got to be there. There we go, I've got a piece. That was relatively easy, there was the rock fall on the left hand side. Just got to pick this bit of gold up now. Looks like a smaller piece than the first piece I found. It looks like the next rock fall is going to be on the left, so I've got a bit of leeway to try and find all the pieces on this side. There we go, finally picked it up. Now just a small matter of dropping it in the sack. There we go, got it in there. So I'll continue to find some more pieces of gold and then I'll go and head up to the next part of the game. Okay, so I'm now heading back to the research facility for the next part of this quite laborious process I've got to go through. So I'm going to head up to another floor that we didn't see before. Which is this floor. Oh, I've missed it again. And in this floor, we've got to take the gold, weigh it, and then decide whether we're going to use it in the smelter or not to build the lever. Now, there's different weights of gold, ranging from 0 to 100 grams, and only the ones that are 10, 20, 50, or 100 grams are pure enough to be put into the smelter. So you've got to work out by weighing the gold which ones to keep. Now, the problem is, there's no numbers on the scales. So I'll take my piece of gold out and put it on the scales. And the weight on the scales, obviously it's tilted as you'd expect. But I've got no idea how much that weighs. So I'll take another piece of gold, stick it on this side. If I can work out where to place it, there we go. Okay, so by the looks of it, they weigh exactly the same but I still don't know how much they weigh <laughs> I've got no idea whether they weigh a suitable amount to be smelted or not let's take another one put it on this side see if it sheds any more light on the situation okay well that's tilted the scales again as you might expect but if I take one of them off well that's made the one on the left heavier. So I think what you've got to do is some kind of sort of problem solving, puzzle solving maths to, to try and work out the weights of the, the gold pieces that you've picked up. But frankly, it's all just a bit too boring to be bothered. 
but let's just put all the pieces of gold back in the sack. You can obviously put the pieces of gold presumably on these shelves either side as well to try and sort them into what you think is good or bad gold. I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, you can drop them there as well. So you probably, as you go through the game, you probably learn the weights of the different pieces of gold or what they look, based on what they look like or something like that. I don't entirely know. Um, but I can't really be bothered with that. So what I'm going to do is just take all the gold and go to the next level. The level above is where you put the gold in the furnace to smelt it. So let's just see what happens. Now here, if you put pure gold in, then it'll smelt it. If you put impure gold in, then it will cause all the, all the existing gold to become unusable. So one mistake and you're right back to square one. And remember, I've got to make a lever with 800 grams of gold and so far I might have a couple of hundred at most. So let's put that in. Okay, so I've put a couple of pieces of gold in, but the temperature is only 21 degrees at the moment, so I must have to go somewhere else. Press the heat on here. Oh, here we go. How's this work then? Okay, the heat's going up. And I've got 40 of gold, which means actually I must have got two 20s. So luckily I've got that right. But I've still got to go and get another... 600 760 worth of um, gold before I can actually craft this lever so basically that's where I'm going to leave it let's just talk about the various aspects of the game graphics wise I think it's not too bad I quite like the graphics actually I think they're some of the best graphics we've seen on a firebird game so far the animation of the little guy in his overalls is quite nice the uh, areas outside with the rocks and everything are quite decent as well. Uh, it sounds pretty basic. It's just the pit patter of his feet and the thump of the pneumatic hammers and a few other little noises. Um, so it all comes down to the playability really and the playability is just really, really boring. It's like, this is like a job. It's not any fun. Games are supposed to be fun and this is like a really tedious job where you've got to trudge around mining little bits of gold putting them in a furnace, weighing them, using a metal detector, it's just not very interesting. So I'm going to leave it there for the review because frankly I don't think I can be bothered to play it anymore. I'm not interested enough to see what happens when you finally craft a lever to turn off the pneumatic hammers. What is going to happen fairly soon though, I suspect, is that the hammer is going to push through the surface of the riverbed somewhere so I might just go and stand there and see what happens when that occurs. Yeah, you can see the uh, the piles of wood are really down to the bare bones there. So while that's happening, let's go through my scores for the game. So firstly, packaging was a bit average, to be honest. The image on the front made it look like an action-packed Indiana Jones-style game, and the reality is it's not that at all. It's like working at a research facility that's a bit boring. Also, the instructions were nowhere near detailed enough about telling you what you need to do in certain areas, like how you put these pieces of wood below the hammers to stop them breaking through the surface and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, a bit vague in the instructions. So five out of 10 for the packaging. Presentation is weird. It's just those weird cycling options where if you click the wrong one, then it's tough. You basically just have to give up and restart the game. So presentation, I'm going to give four. Graphics, as I mentioned, I think are really pretty decent. There's a bit of a strange colour scheme. There's a lot of pastel sort of pink and blue sort of colours. But overall, I think the graphics are pretty nice. So I'm going to go seven out of ten for the graphics. Sound is pretty pedestrian. It's a few thumping sounds of hammers, the pitter-patter of the guy's feet and the noise of a few rock falls. So three out of 10 for the sound. And finally, playability. Well, it's just really dull. I mean, if you really got stuck into it, it might be quite a decent game. The concept is actually quite interesting. And certainly if we were rating it on originality, it'd get a high score. But the fact it's really slow to move around and also really fiddly to try and pick things up with that hand cursor when you're on the 
appropriate screens for that. I'm just going to have to give it 3 out of 10 for playability. That gives it an overall score of 4.5, which I think makes it the worst game I've played so far in this series. And I definitely don't think it was worth $1.99, not for me anyway. If you like this kind of strategic sort of game, then maybe so. But a weird mixture of a strategy game, a bit of a puzzle game, and also some pixel-perfect platforming just doesn't do it for me at all. So that's it for this game. If you've ever played Pneumatic Hammers and you have any strong feelings about it one way or another, then let me know in the comments. And hopefully my next game review will be something a little bit more interesting. I'll be back with that in a few days' time. As always, thanks for watching and see you again soon.